What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Missable Details video. Now today we will be going through a super strange, mind-blowing and mind-bending story in Tales from the Pizzaplex, which has a varied response from the FNAF community and that is under construction. This is actually my first Missable Details video for a Tales from the Pizzaplex story and the reason I chose this one first is because I know that straight after reading it there was a lot of clues uh, through foreshadowing as to what was actually going on in the story. Not only that, it is super terrifying and I hope that by making this video more people will see the good elements of the story rather than just the bad elements um, that some people see. So without further ado, let's get into everything that you missed in Under Construction, from easter eggs and foreshadowing to game connections and strange occurrences. So the protagonist of the story is called Maya or Maya, I say Maya because it was based off of the month May. And you could already draw a connection when you find out that in Hinduism there is actually a goddess of illusion with the same name. Others also interpret it as dream uh, and of course both have very strong connections in the semantic field of this entire story. Straight away, the first three words in the story actually give this huge foreshadowing that you would otherwise never pick up on unless you read it twice. Uh, and the words are, this is unreal when Maya is looking around the mega pizzaplex. This is followed up upon a few sentences later when Noelle says that I have to admit I thought this mega pizzaplex was more hype than reality, also pointing to the future when Maya's hype becomes too good to be true. Now, as I just said, this story does in fact take place in the Mega Pizzaplex, which is a good thing to note when uh, when reading these stories. So Lally's Game was actually a feature in the Mini Pizzaplex, but in Frailty and Under Construction, we are discussing the same Pizzaplex from Security Breach, the Mega Pizzaplex. Now in this story, the Mega Pizzaplex has only just, me um, has only just opened up and it is May based off of the fact that it is Maya's birthday uh, and this is the reason why a lot of the elements inside the Pizzaplex aren't actually in Security Breach because this is how it looked when it first opened. Over the years the location was most likely changed a lot and it's even possible that a lot of the rides and areas were shut due to some of the incidents that we see in some of these books. Even more sneaky foreshadowing comes in with Jackson tells Maya that it is all about her. Obviously later she would step into the AR booth which is called The World Celebrates You and finds that the new virtual world seems to revolve around her. We get properly introduced to Jackson as a science nerd when he begins arguing that age is just a construct of the human mind. Now Noel responds that it's an empirical fact that Maya is 16 years old no matter what her brain has to say about it. Now Jackson then asks what alive really means which leads him to mention quantum immortality which is a thought experiment in the field of quantum mechanics showing the distinction between classical quantum physics and the many worlds theory which is also mentioned. Uh, if you have a gun pointing towards a person that fires based off the randomized spin of a particle, the chances of the gun firing are equal to the chances of it not firing. This is very similar to the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment that was brought up in Friendly Face. Now, if the many worlds theory is true, the person will never be shot because the only way that they can continue being conscious is in the worlds where the gun doesn't fire. Therefore, against all odds, the person would exist in the world where the gun never fired. This is the idea that the, the, the person is immortal through quantum nature and has a lot of these themes that are close to FNAF where souls continue to live on, whether it's in a person, an animatronic, or an arcade game. Now the gang pass a worker dressed as Montgomery Gator and they mention seeing Roxanne Wolf. But additionally, holographic Glamrock Freddy indirectly calls Maya a superstar and Jackson says rock and roll like Montgomery Gator in Security Breach. They also discover tons of attractions like the Fast Freddy and the VR booths and Jackson also mentions how there's roleplay venues and I have a feeling that this could be the place where a future story takes place. Recall that in Somnophobia there is going to be a story in the Mega Pizzaplex as well with an eerie Springtrap costume in the roleplaying area. Now if so, I have a slight feeling that unlike the stories in Fazbear Frights being linked through like the Stitch Rave Stingers and the epilogues, uh, I think that these ones are actually going to be linked based on which pizza plex they take place in. 
Now Jackson continues to nerd out about the AR technology for The World Celebrates You, explaining how there are all sorts of sensory modalities. I don't know if I said that word right. Of course, there's visual to see the augmented objects and auditory to be able to hear them. Then there's somatosensory, which is a system of neural structures that give the perception of touch, temperature, and pain. There's olfactory, which is actually a word given for you, you know your sense of smell. Um, and as Jackson perfectly describes, there's haptic, um, which provides the ability to grasp onto things. Now, when you sum it up, these five kind of sensory modalities, as, as he calls it, only make up four of the senses, touching twice, uh, smelling, hearing, and seeing. Now, it's good to note that the sense of taste, which is not mentioned here, is actually about 90% smell in our bodies, which is probably why Maya is able to eat for a year in the simulation and eat the cake as well and describe all the flavours without actually realising that her sense of taste isn't being fully utilised. Uh, in other words, the description for the AR machine shows how insanely close to reality it is, which is why Maya can't distinguish them for the entire time. Maya finds the AR booth, which looks like a snow globe without the snow. She gets in and puts on the headset to find herself in the pizzaplex with everyone focused on her. All of her family and friends are there, and I quote, Everyone looked like Maya's birthday was the happiest day of their lives. This, of course, is a huge reference to the FNAF 3 minigame Happiest Day, and this is a core line for a huge theory that comes from this story. It's possible that Maya is already dead inside the machine, but her soul has lived on through quantum immortality and now she is getting her simulated happiest day. If this story parallels Princess Quest, it's possible that this implies Princess Quest was supposed to be Cassidy's happiest day, but it got ruined until, I guess, what you could call a glitch in both situations. One way this story can definitely be connected to Princess Quest, if you are wondering, of course, is that the cake that Glamrock Chica in her pink dress wheels over to her has 16 candles, because she is 16 years old. But this also has a double meaning, because the original Princess Quest game, as many pointed out before, has 16 torches. Theorists always believed this meant 16 victims, or it could match up to the 16 tapes in FNAF VR, but either way, I think this is a really cool and intentional detail. Now, when doing research for these videos, I always read through the story two or three times, and on the last time, I noticed the line to end this section of the story, and it made chills go down my entire body. So, after she has her huge Pizzaplex birthday celebration, it describes that Maya wanted it to last forever. This is a classic plot of be careful what you wish for, because I can assure you Maya, this does last forever and it definitely shouldn't have. Maya comes out of the booth and into the Pizzaplex feeling like she was floating rather than walking, just another detail that really shows the true nature of this whole situation. On top of that, they go into a ride where they see Foxy and a load of other Freddy's characters jump scaring them, and afterwards, Maya says that her legs feel like jellyfish tentacles. Oh my gosh, I love this story and the foreshadowing. Now eventually, one year later, we find out that Maya's grandparents and a lot of other people around the world are dying from cancer. Many people actually have the theory that the AR booth gave Maya cancer, which is why the strange elements in this story evolve quickly. Uh, for example, after her grand dies of cancer, her other grandparents do too, uh, and then later and later, um, you know, more and more people are dying of cancer, it multiplies essentially. Also later, the jelly babies grow really fast and become a huge jelly amalgamation. The rate at which this happens basically gets faster, which is just how cancer cells actually work in real life. They divide and they duplicate and multiply and they don't stop. And that is how tumours are actually formed. Maya starts to notice that nobody really cares about any of it. This starts when a group at school is talking about how the how the oncology ward, sorry, which is for chemotherapy and radiation treatments, is full of cancer patients, to which a girl then starts talking about makeup. 
just, just casually. Jackson mentions how his mom got cancer, but doesn't have anything to say about it. Later on, they play happy music while they talk about cancer on the news. I actually made a sketch about this, so I think you should go and check it out. Uh, and they mention how the UK is introducing a mass cremation law, and no, this isn't a kill off loads of people like I first thought, it's because there's so many deaths that they need to cremate the bodies as there's hardly any space to bury them at all. They go to see their teacher's baby to find that she is named Cecilia. Now this could be a stretch but the name Cecilia actually means blind in Latin. If you pick up on that when you first read this you might be able to guess what happens next but probably not because as we all are aware, this is the weirdest story anyone could ever come up with. Maya finds out that the baby has no face and its head is translucent. In fact, she describes it as an unfinished see-through doll's head and a placeholder for an infant. This for me was when it clicked. It's because the baby is still under construction. The word placeholder especially is a pretty good word to use here because it has kind of like a semantic of video game development, you know? According to Mrs. Carpenter, Cecilia likes to be the centre of attention, just like the whole premise of the AR booth. I get a nice little shout out, because apparently I smell, and then Cecilia gets a nice little shout out when Maya literally starts becoming paranoid by seeing her sister with bread rolls. <laughs> Now, here's some, some math for you. According to the news anchors, 342,128 people died in China in one day. That's one five thousandths of their population today. Meanwhile, 312,572 people died in the UK, which is one two hundredth of our population. It's kind of weird. Like, I mean, China is obviously the most populated country in the world, so that makes sense. Uh, they say that these numbers are very similar, but obviously in the context of the whole thing, no, they are not. The UK is going a lot faster than China. And that kind of shows how little care they put into it as well, uh, whether that was an intentional detail or not. Shortly after, the story seems to skip to Christmas, and by then, I assure you, the UK will be extinct. <laughs> The jelly babies grow into jelly adults and Pastor Ben comes to Maya's house when he tells her about the sanctity of life, uh, all life is sacred, and how he baptises the jelly babies. They continue to multiply and Maya spends her life running around for everyone and learning how to help the sick. And as time goes on, the key thing to point out is that Maya is becoming more and more connected to this world. She starts to get used to the strange reality and has a character development as she accepts her fate. Uh, just because otherwise she'd be different to everybody else. The final time Maya runs back to her house, she sees Mr. Vance in his window watching her. The only time in the story we had seen him prior to this event, he had kicked his dog. He was an old man who seemed completely fine. Maya was wondering why he hadn't died from cancer yet. Uh, it's possible that with the overarching parallelism to Princess Quest that this story provides, this could be old man consequences. After all of that, Maya tries to hide from the ever-growing jelly conglomerate, but ends up being a part of it, still alive but unable to breathe. Final thing that I feel the need to point out is the overwhelming mention of flowers throughout this entire story, especially roses. In the Pizzaplex, Maya was wearing a red dress and a red rose behind her ear, uh, she mentions how she likes botany and how her favourite flower was red roses. The birthday cake that Chica gives her has red candy roses. Her parents were wrapped... Uh, her parents? Her presents were wrapped in floral themed paper. She has a bed spread with roses. Her grandparents all helped her to buy a golden rose pendant for her birthday and she gives roses to Mrs. Carpenter. I don't know if there's any symbolism with this, but there is a lot about flowers and gardening and, and red roses. Uh, it's so strange, so let me know in the comments what you think about that. Uh, remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this, but that's it from me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.